Hi guys. It is an absolutely spectacularly gorgeous, and I do mean over the top beautiful, Sunday morning here in the collapse of global industrial civilization. That would be Sunday morning, July 4th, 2021, the 4th of July, Independence Day here at Bugs in a Jar Farm, and uh, I have got a lot on my plate. I have to go spread gravel, hoe corn, hopefully go to a picking party later this afternoon. Uh, so with all on my plate, this is going to be a fairly short uh, sermon this Sunday morning. I was going to talk about this hilarious story about that Exxon lobbyist <laughs> who got busted on that undercover tape. But anyway, maybe I'll talk about that tomorrow. People so shocked that Exxon Oil is uh, is lying about their concern for climate change. But anyway, it is Sunday morning and it's the 4th of July. So uh, I've been looking at the various choices of 4th of July sermons and uh, going down the list we're going to go with Caitlin Johnstone the uh, the lefty Caitlin Johnstone for those of you who are not familiar with Caitlin's work I did I just do one of hers recently I, anyway this is what Caitlin Johnstone has to say now, now guys I, I need to preface this, when I do a sermon, it's not, it does not necessarily mean that I agree with every single word this woman is saying. Okay, I'm not saying I agree because I am reading her sermon, but I do agree with, I would say, about 95% of this, and you can try to figure out on your own the 5% that uh, your old doomer does not. But take it away, Caitlin Johnstone on the 4th of July. <clears throat> Happy Independence Day. Notes from the edge of the narrative matrix. Yes, we're going to go to the edge of the narrative matrix. <clears throat> Today, America celebrates its hard-fought victory in its fight to free itself from the rule of British monarchs so it could be ruled by U.S. oligarchs. <clears throat> Hollywood trained us to fear psychopathic killers prowling around in the dark so we won't notice the psychopathic killers who rule our world in broad daylight. We have been trained to fear the serial killer covered in blood and wielding a chainsaw, so we won't notice the serial killer wearing a suit and wielding a pen. The ocean caught fire. I don't know. Uh, did you guys see this video from that pipeline, that gas pipeline exploding uh, off the coast of Mexico? I, I mean, it looked like something straight out uh, 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 of some vision of the apocalypse. If you haven't seen the video, to, anyway, that's what she's talking about here. The effing ocean caught fire, and they just bombed Iraq and Syria, and they are killing kids in Yemen and ramping up nuclear escalations against Russia and China. And Facebook is warning users that it is those who criticize this system who are the dangerous extremist. Okay, this is, I guess, this is how to uh, fool the masses <clears throat> on the 4th of July. Step one, train the public to only accept reputable sources like the New York Times, WAPO, CNN, etc., and to dismiss India media, you know, such as Collapse Chronicles, as Russian propaganda. Step two, 
make sure the reputable sources do not cover stories that are inconvenient for the powerful, leaving only indie media to report on them. This is why I, I am, I, you know, all kidding aside, and I'm going to argue with her a little bit, this story about uh, this Exxon oil lobbyist uh, is the number two story on the mainstream media today. So, while well, generally what she says sometimes a story even the mainstream media uh, has to, but, but of course, well, now I'm getting into the rant I was going to, anyway, maybe I'll get back to that one tomorrow. Let's get back to, uh, this is uh, Caitlin Sherman, not Sam Mitchell's. All right. <clears throat> this new trend of complete mass media blackouts on inconvenient stories is a problem for many reasons, among them the fact that it's just so hard to fight. How do you deal with all mass media outlets collaborating in unison to black out important stories. It's important to understand that the imperial propagandists don't just tell us what to think, they also train us how to think. Feeding us bad information is only half their job, the other half is shaping the cognitive frameworks by which we form opinions about that information. That is why the mass media have opinion segments as well as news segments. They are not there in case you were curious what Johnny McThink Tank's opinions are on the issue of the day they know you weren't. They are to model the acceptable parameters of thinking on that issue, and the acceptable parameters of thinking will always take it as a given that the mechanisms of oligarchy and empire must not be interrupted or inconvenienced in any way. Differing opinions will be modeled on how those mechanisms should be advanced, but n never if they should. That is how come the renowned expert PhD pundit will often have a less truth-based worldview than your stoner flatmate with an eighth grade education because they have been trained on both what to think and how to think, they will pour all of their intellect into defending lie-based worldviews. The most dangerous extremists of our age are not radical jihadists, nor fundamental Christians, nor white supremacist, nor communist, nor anarchist, but mainstream adherents to the status quo politics that are murdering people around the world and driving us to Armageddon. This should not be a controversial thing to say, and part of the reason, guys, I'm doing this is to see if Google demonetizes this video, because uh, one of the ways, you know, I have to promise every time, uh, you know, when you have a monetized channel, you have to promise that uh, nothing in your video is about a controversial issue. Uh, so, so far, Collapse Chronicles, I've had about 50 uh, monetized videos. I did get one Manga Bay Roundup uh, yanked. Uh, so I am good, this, this is a test case to see if anything in here that Caitlin Johnstone is saying uh, is violates the YouTube monetization policy. And my guess is it will not. My, uh, I'm going to predict that the 
the ad cop bots will approve this video. We will see. All right, where were we? Talking about the most, ex the most dangerous extremists of our age are mainstream adherents to the status quo politics that are murdering people around the world and driving us to Armageddon. This should not be a controversial thing to say. Certainly, some of the above groups are dangerous and wrong, but they are objectively far less dangerous and deadly than the mainstream, mass-murdering, ecocidal extremists who people inaccurately label centrists and moderates. <clears throat> now, I don't know how old Caitlin is. Uh, I thought she was, I, I thought she was, was like in her 30s, but now she, this is her uh, letter to the younger generation on the 4th of July in the year 2021. <clears throat> Dear younger generation, sorry for destroying the environment. But in our defense, we did everything we possibly could do, short of inconveniencing ourselves in any way or doing anything we do not like doing or taking any kind of meaningful action. All right, again, I'm just going to, I'm just going, I, I said I was going to let you figure out uh, where I disagree with Caitlin. Now, everything about that sentence to the younger generation is true. What Caitlin does not mention or does not understand, the younger generation she is preaching to is, and I don't have that much dealings with the younger generation, but the dealings I have with the younger generation is that they are more clueless uh, than, than we old farts. And I have, I, I so far have never met anyone, uh, let's say uh, now under the age of 30, that has done one thing that would inconvenience themselves in any way or one young person doing anything they don't like doing. And I have not witnessed one young human being taking any kind of meaningful action. So that this, this whole crap, uh, now I do apologize to the younger generation, but I understand that I am apologizing to a generation that, that in, in many ways is more clueless than we are. Cut the crap, Caitlin. Anyway, I'm sorry. This was uh, Caitlin's uh, sermon, not mine. Getting back uh, to where are, where were we in the in Caitlin's Independence Day rant? Okay, <clears throat> American warmongers want to bring democracy to Iran, China, North Korea, Russia, Syria and eventually at the very bottom of the list, perhaps to the United States as well. <clears throat> Congratulations to all my fellow Westerners as we celebrate our 100th anniversary of pretending that we are superior to the Communist Party of China. Westerners have always been far more savage and brutish than any of the populations around the world they have ever set out to civilize, and that remains the case to this day. The only reason this is not clear to us all is our school books were written by Westerners. And just so you guys understand, this is one of her points that I do not 100% agree with us. It makes no difference. Western, Eastern humans, humans 
have always been far more savage and brutish than any of the populations of our fellow earthlings around the world uh, they have ever set out to civilize and that remains the case to this day. It has nothing to do with Western, Eastern, indigenous, whatever. Humans are bloodthirsty savages, and as soon as they get the technology to destroy this planet, that is what they're going to do. Anybody who does not understand this basic concept, Caitlin Johnstone needs to read Guns, Germs, and Steel by Jared Diamond to understand this. But anyway, we all have our blind spots, and Caitlin has fewer blind spots than most of the people. So we are going to get back. Now this next point she's making, I admit I am woefully underinformed about. <clears throat> The U.S. Empire's treatment of Julian Assange has exposed the evil and corruption of the U.S. Empire more than Julian Assange himself ever could. Let's look over to the homeless. A government whose solution to homelessness is to criminalize the homeless is a government that should not exist. All right, let's look at, we're gonna talk about revolution for a while. Western Marxist, <laughs> Western Marxist talking about violent revolution when they cannot get 20 people at a protest are like a little boy talking about fighting supervillains when he cannot even tie his own shoes. There won't be revolution, violent or otherwise, while propaganda rules public consciousness. And uh, this is probably where Caitlin Johnstone and Chris Hedges, she's kind of like a female uh, Chris Hedges, this is where Caitlin, where I side with Caitlin on this. Chris Hedges still at least acting like he believes there is going to be a revolution. Obviously, Caitlin Johnstone has read 1984, and Chris Hedges, with all his reading, has never picked up a copy of 1984. Thank you, Caitlin, for explaining to Chris Hedges that there will never be a resolution, I mean, a revolution. Now, she's insinuating that if propaganda did not rule public consciousness, there would be a revolution. Uh, ding, ding, ding. Anyway, <clears throat> okay, I had to go look this up. You know, it says I don't recognize cultural references anymore. Any talk of any kind of revolution is just vapid LARPing, L-A-R-P-I-N-G. As long as people are being successfully propagandized away from rising up, and they are. So having no idea what LARPing meant, uh, I had to go LARPing is the acronym for live action role playing. So then I had to go over to Urban Dictionary so I can understand modern cultural references. <clears throat> LARPing. Traditionally, LARPing is when a bunch of nerds get together in a field or pasture and beat each other up with foam core swords. In the internet sense of the word, it refers to people who put on a facade and lie about having lives that are far more interesting than their lives really are. Yes, I know some LARPers 
in my, I mean, all know some LARPers. I'm probably been accused of being a LARPer myself. Anyway, now that we all know what LARPing means, <clears throat> any talk of any kind of revolution is just vapid LARPing. <clears throat> as long as people are being successfully propagandized away from rising up, and they are. <clears throat> Your dreams of revolution are so very, very far away right now, you might as well be talking about magic. The violent revolution versus the peaceful revolution debate on the left is as meaningless as arguing over what company makes the best model of magic wand. No revolution is happening at all until the left, the left, well, uh, what remains of the left, addresses the problem of mass scale media psyops first. I had someone ask me in a comment they had not, uh, didn't recognize the word psyop, which is short for, I'm pretty sure, psychological operation or psychological operative. Uh, anyway, that's a whole nother rant talking about the mass scale media psyops going on uh, on this planet today, but we won't get into a C word rant because she never mentions the C word. Well, here's the C, here's one C word. Okay. <clears throat> Caitlin needs to define the populist right. What is the populist right? The populist right are Republicans who want to go to war with China instead of Syria. <clears throat> The U.S. government sponsors the dropping of military explosives on one of the most densely populated areas in the world while waxing self-righteously about human rights. Ultimately, the problem is that mass-scale propaganda institutions are fully unified in their consent manufacturing narratives while the rest of us are rapidly divided against each other. And uh, for those of you who have not stumbled on uh, me talking about the definition of bugs in a jar. It is a, it is a, the name of my place here, my, you know, my little unintentional community in my hip camp, what it is, it is a metaphor for a psyops. That is what bugs in a jar is. Now the media are, are just part, you know, a major part of the psyops. YouTube, a huge part uh, of the psyops going on in, in bugs in a jar. They are uh, the, you know, we're talking about the sadistic 12 year olds putting all of these otherwise innocent bugs in a jar, shaking up the jar to get everybody fighting among themselves. They were going around doing what bugs do, minding their own business, and suddenly they're thrown together and, and set off, you know, fighting each other, defending their territories, you know, talking about who is wearing a mask or who is getting vaccinated and not, uh, while the, the bug shakers sit back and laugh like a sadistic 12-year-old. Anyone wondering what bugs in a jar means? Apparently nobody gets my joke. But anyway, I hate to explain punchlines. But getting back, winding up, uh, this is the last section of her Independence Day rant. <clears throat> We're going to go look at spiritual enlightenment. 
people who have experienced spiritual enlightenment talk about how they now see how everyone, meaning everyone else's stories about life, are false. Opening your eyes to what is going on in our world is very much the same. Seeing the propaganda narratives which have nothing to do with what is true or real. Can we name any propaganda narratives going on in this planet uh, the past year or so that have nothing to do with what is true or real? <clears throat> All right. If you ignored the intense partisan narratives and just dispassionately observed the large-scale behaviors of money, resources, and weapons, you would have no idea that the United States got a new president in January. But if you listen to the narratives, it is supposedly a night and day difference between this administration and the last administration. Whether you are talking about personal narratives or mass scale narratives, they are entirely different from life as it actually is. The babbling stories in our minds are simply ineffective tools for describing reality. The more we get our heads above them, the clearer we can see. Amen. Sister Caitlin on the 4th of July, 2021. And now that Caitlin and I have got that off our chest, and tested uh, the YouTube bots, whether they're going to A, demonetize this channel, or, I mean, this video, or rip this video down and give me a strike, uh, will be tested by Caitlin Johnstone. Uh, you go, girl. But that out of the way, uh, I have to get back to shoveling my planet-eating uh, gravel pile uh, then I got to go hoe my corn, and then we need to head to hopefully what's going to turn into a picking party. Say bye. Say bye to people. Say bye bye. Happy 4th of July. Get out there and blow off some fireworks while you still can. Bye, guys.